In D2L, professors can create web pages that feature text, images, and other embedded content. These are native to D2L rather than files that are uploaded, so they're quick and easy to create and modify. For students, they load quickly and make good use of screen space both on computers and mobile devices. These pages can be short assignment instructions, procedural information, or even entire syllabi. In this video, I'll show you how to create and add basic content to a web page in D2L. Before I get into building web pages, it's worth understanding a web page versus an uploaded file. The first content topic is a .docx file, or a Word document, created in Microsoft Word that I uploaded into D2L. It's available to my students in a viewer, and it's downloadable. These work in a variety of situations, but I cannot make changes to it in D2L. If I found that I needed to make a change to this file, I would need to upload an updated copy that I had edited in Word on my desktop computer. PDFs are a similar situation, plus they may take a little longer for D2L to show on screen and don't always make the best use of screen space. On the other hand, this is a web page I created here in D2L. Unlike a file I upload, I built this directly into D12 by typing or pasting text and uploading the image. I can make changes to this file very quickly and at any time. Because I don't need to upload an updated copy, I just change it right here in D2L. We have a separate tutorial on uploading files like .docx or .pdf files. But here, let's see how we build and edit web pages. So I have an empty module here. And I'm going to create a web page by clicking the blue New button and choosing Create a File. This opens the usual text and rich content editor you typically see across D2L's tools. After what I just told you about uploaded files, it begs the question, why is this listed in the menu as Create a File? In D2L's jargon, a web page is a .html file, which is true. You're creating a page coded in .html language that lives natively on the web. .html files are some of the basic ingredients of most websites on the internet. Within the page editor, I even have the option of coding .html if I click these two little brackets with the slash in between. Happily, I do not need to know how to code any HTML in order to add text and images and other types of content to a D2L web page. First, I need to type the title of the page. Then, I'll add text. I can type it directly into the editor, or I can copy and paste it in from somewhere else. If I paste it in, D2L is going to ask me if I want to include the formatting from its original source, keep formatting, or I want to remove the formatting. As a rule, I always remove formatting and allow D2L to format the text according to its defaults. That way, the font and other formatting characteristics are consistent with other content in D2L. If I'm adding a lot of text into a D2L web page, I may want headings and subheadings for different parts of the text. This works a little bit like any word processing application. I highlight the text. And from the paragraph dropdown, I'll choose a heading. And perhaps for another section, I'll choose another size heading. Creating headings this way is crucial, instead of simply using, for instance, boldface and changing the size of the text, although those features are available here in the D2L editor. This is friendlier to screen readers for the visually impaired, using headings and paragraph style from this style menu in the upper left of the editor. When I'm finished adding the text I want to add, I simply click the blue Save and Close button in the bottom left. And you can see that D2L has created a simple text message or web page for my students. And I'll see it as a content topic in its parent module. If I want to make changes to this, it's quite easy. I click the drop down menu caret next to that content topic and choose Edit HTML, and the editor is open again. What you've seen so far may be all you need to use web pages effectively in D2L, but you can add other kinds of content. Let's add images and hyperlinks. To add an image to this page, 
I'll get the cursor where I want the image to be, and then I'll click the Insert Image icon, which looks like a little landscape photograph. If I already have the file in the file repository for this course, I can click Course Offering Files. But let's say I want to get it from the hard drive of my computer. I'll click My Computer. Then I can drag and drop the image in, but if I'm working on a smaller screen, say a laptop screen, it may be more efficient to click the Upload button so that I get a traditional Windows Explorer or Mac Finder window. I'll then click the image that I want in my storage device and click the Open button in the lower right. D12 gives me a file name verification here, and I could change my mind by hitting the X. But if I'm ready to go, I click the blue Add button. This is important. D12 will ask if I want alt or alternative text. This is used by screen readers for the visually impaired, and therefore, from an accessibility standpoint, is essential. I'll simply give it a two or three word description of what's in the file. Then I click the blue OK button and the image is installed. And I can highlight the image and use various formatting, for instance alignment, to get the image the way I want it. Also notice a small context menu opens up just above the image with tools to specifically work with the image. In another tutorial video we go into editing options for images in the D12 editor across D12 tools. Lastly, I can add a hyperlink or a link to somewhere else on the internet on any D12 web page. I'll click the drop down menu caret next to the web page's name, click Edit HTML. I'll type in some cover text for the hyperlink. I'll highlight that text. And then I'll click the chain link icon in the upper toolbar for the whole window rather than the context menu. From this list, I'll scroll down and choose URL. I'll type or paste in the web address of the way, website or web page I want to point to, and I'll leave it at New Window for Target. I'll click Insert, Save and Close, and I have a working web link that when students click, it'll open in a new window or tab. They can easily click the D12 tab to return to D12. A few more tips. One, keep a copy of any content you build into a web page. That includes images, and I keep text in, like, say, a Microsoft Word or Google Doc document. That way you have a backup outside D12. You can also download a web page. If you click the Download button, it's going to come down as a .html file but that's usually compatible for most word processors. And another tip, as I said before, this editor is available across nearly all of the editing tools you have in D12. Dropbox instructions, discussion posts, even some text entry items in quizzes. So it's useful to know how to use this editor in general.